Sorry, you rang? You rang for a look? I wanna do this everywhere! No, wait. <laughs> everyone, it's Kendall here. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up? Home skillet biscuit. Today is a super duper exciting video. I've been waiting for this package to reach my house for not that long, because it was two day shipping. I had to wait over the weekend. Today we are testing out Kaja Beauty. As K-Beauty becomes more of like a fixture in international beauty, as it becomes more of a conversation and more of a Thing that people want to try. I'm always expecting new and better things to come out of K-Beauty and particularly brands that are inspired by K-Beauty. They take all the cool textures and, and portability and style from K-Beauty but make it um, in more colors. <laughs> Complexion products wise. Today we're looking at Kaja because I had my, my interest peak. As soon as I saw all the products, the campaigns, everything about it so I'm super excited. So like before we get started, let's talk very briefly about how you are going to share this video. I generally don't uh, make people feel bad if they don't share my videos. I usually don't even bring up sharing, but your girl dropped $500. <laughs> um, so like, I'd like to have a little bit of that money back. <laughs> $510 worth of Kasha Beauty for you and also because I, I need an excuse to go shopping so. As I was looking at campaign videos and campaign pictures for the brand, I was so happy to see that though the brand is Korean inspired, they didn't ignore the audience that they're trying to attract through bringing it to US Sephora. Well, in all beauty, but particularly K-beauty. <laughs> Tends to be very much so focused on primarily light skin, fair Asians, no tan to dark Asians, fair white people, no tan, and no one else. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the brand I'm speaking I'm speaking personally I haven't heard anything from Kaja this is not sponsored by Kaja this is all my money and all my opinions so Kaja knew that when they are making this brand they're doing it to break barriers but also keep true to styling of K-beauty but making it more available both by having it in Sephora and also by having a, a variance of color ranges for complexion products the style of K-beauty the things that are all aesthetic about it but also the usability of good products from Korea and when they decided to make it more available they put that in the forefront and I really really appreciate it it wasn't like we're ashamed that we have a few more colors I know you'll never wear this but we have it just to shut like two people up like no they did it like this is our brand here we are so I really do appreciate that so there's several complexion products but the only one that I thought was really really exciting was actually the don't settle concealer I got two colors because I wasn't quite sure what color I would be. The concealer is $19. It's a buildable light to medium coverage creaseless concealer that has a light as air feel. And it comes in 12 colors. Just looking at the swatches, I'm noticing that it's a pretty even distribution of color range. It's not just a whole bunch of very light and then like two dark colors. Too fair, too light, too light medium to medium too dark and too deep dark. I know that primarily those that would be watching my videos would be concerned about probably tan to dark. I'm noticing that the two colors that I have are quite yellow, but nine through 12 look to be quite red. Um, I don't have those in person, so I can't really show you those. So I decided to get two colors. I wanted one to go under my eye and one to actually be face concealer. This is number seven. This is considered to be medium with yellow undertones. That looks yellow, but a little bit more neutral to me. And then number eight, Candy Gender, medium with to deep undertones. I don't know what a deep undertone is. <laughs> mm, it looks pretty neutral as well to me. This is number eight, there's 12 colors, so there's four colors deeper than this. Oh, these are made in Korea. Interesting. So for my first wipes here, I am noticing that it dries down quite slowly and might even leave a little bit of a glow under the eye or wherever you end up putting it. That to me is not a problem because I have very dry skin, but I'm thinking I could see where it'd be an issue for those of you with oily skin, but let's see on the face, let's see. So this is the lighter one, number seven. I don't know how much I should put, but my under eyes have been interesting recently, so. This is the darker one, so I'm gonna use this around my mouth. Quick note. <laughs> Quick note on the doe foot. It is this like slightly slanted 
thinner doe foot. I actually really like it. They weren't kidding when they said lightweight. It feels like nothing is on my face. Everything is spreading out really well. It's not the fullest coverage concealer. I'll say that. Um, if you're looking for like something that's going to paint your face, like you're looking for super high coverage, you won't see anything. You won't see my skin. <laughs> Overall, the brand in general and K-Beauty in general tends to be focused more so on perfecting, but not like masking necessarily. I'm gonna try to see if I can like layer it upon itself anywhere to get any more coverage. Is it any, in any way buildable? A lot of times when you have tan to deep skin, you'll have like grayness sometimes right here. So this in lieu of using like a color corrector. Okay, so after two layers, I'm still seeing some grayness here and that's just the discoloration under the concealer. This is very thin and watery, which leads me to believe this is a concealer that if you want more coverage, you gotta keep it there for a bit. I do feel like I need some warmth and I didn't get a third concealer, so I'm just gonna put pop my, my little Fenty, what is this, truffle on my forehead in particular because I'm warmer up there. All right, so there it is blended out. I must say this concealer has quite a, it dries down. Um, I've, I don't feel like I need to powder this. I have dry skin, so sometimes I powder things, sometimes I don't. If you have oilier skin, I still don't feel like this is a super, it's nowhere near as glowy as I thought it was going to be. It looks healthy, like my cheeks look healthy, but it doesn't feel sticky at all. And it leaves like a nice luminosity. I don't know if you can see that, that looks really pretty. It's beautiful. I'm not gonna wear foundation because I honestly don't think I need too. Okay, Miss Kaja, let's cut off. I like it. Ooh, top she though. That's a bad joke. I <laughs> just realized. For those of you that don't know, Kaja means let's go in Korean. So I assume that's the cute little name that they gave it. Next, let's look at cheek products. And there's quite a bit in the cheek and lip area with this company. Probably the thing that's most exciting for a lot of people are the cheek stamps. But the sponge is in the shape of a heart. And I don't think you're supposed to use it as like a stamp really to have like hearts. I guess you could to have hearts on your face, but I think it's more so just, it's a cute little thing and then you blend it out. And there are four colors, so I got all four. It's called the Cheeky Stamp Blendable Blush. It's $24 each. It's a cushion blush formula with a heart-shaped applicator that blends out to a sheer to blendable flush of color. I'm noticing this is a theme with this brand in particular. It's like two tiered things. So at the top, so the top is our sponge. That's so cute. Quite stiff actually, the sponge is a little harder than I expected it to be. And it like retracts inward, so it's, I guess, not too much pressure. And then you open the bottom and there's a cushion blush on the inside. Cushion blushes were always interesting to me. I've had a few in my day. Uh, they're cute. Open it and there's our cushion at the bottom. Can I just say, I appreciate that they made a cushion product that wasn't a cushion foundation. <laughs> a lot of newer brands, they, they kind of talk about how expensive it is to do foundations and I respect that and I understand that. I appreciate that they decided to do concealers and have a wider range because it's less expensive to make concealers, but didn't make like foundations in like three shades the rest of us feel left out they were like you know what's some cushion stuff that we need because it needs to be korean so and cushions are you think of korean makeup you think of a cushion we're gonna do blushes this is number one stamper in there oh my god Ooh, that's moist i don't even think you need to push down on it very much i wouldn't even do that then you just oh my god <laughs> Oh my God, that color is really natural on me though. Let us also appreciate that the colors are different depending on the color of the blush. Number two is Saucy. Also, is it me or does it look like the font for Kaja? Looks like Hunger if it was written in English. That's just cool, sorry. You're like, ma. <laughs> I'm such a child, oh my God. Three, Bossy these names. It is almost like it was made for me. Bossy, which is probably gonna be an orange or a coral. It's like instantly cute swatches. That's not showing up very well because of my lighting, but there's an orangey coral. And last but not least, this feisty. Looks, we're looking plummy, we're looking fuchsia-y. We're looking plummy fuchsia. So those are the colors. These two, the second and the fourth one, though different, are two similar 
to have both, I feel like. This one's a little bit more plum fuchsia. This one's a slightly bit more like plum mauve, but they're both plums, so I wouldn't, I don't think you need both of those. <laughs> so am I gonna take one back? I don't know, I don't think so. These are definitely liquids rather than creams. They're definitely a liquid, they're very thin. Um, let's try to blend one that's been here for a minute. Well, it probably dried down by now. Oh no, it's still blending though. They also have something called the Mochi Pop Bouncy Blushes. There's three different shades of this. I decided to get two of them because I didn't think all of them were like my styles. I got number two and number three, which actually looking online, the first one is pretty. I probably should have got that one too. Why didn't I? These are a compact cream to powder blush, which adds an effortless pop of color on the go. These are $19. So here it is. This is number two, Atmosphere Cream to Powder Bouncy Texture. Um, something that'd be really easy to use with your fingers, I suppose. Three, which is Spoils of Mars. That's pretty. If I had to compare it to kind of the darkest shade of the other blushes, these are certainly stronger. So if you have very deep skin, this would show up a lot better. I'm not quite sure how effectively these ones would, the liquids would, on deeper skin, simply because they're a little sheer. I think what we're gonna do is a nudie blush because I'm basic. The number two saucy. Curious, could I get the little... Ah! <laughs> if you did wanna use it as like an actual stamp, it doesn't work too bad. That's so cute. I wanna do this everywhere. Now wait. <laughs> This is so fun, oh God. Okay, so they definitely sheer out quite a bit, which is fine, but it did leave a nice color. Oh my God, that's so much fun. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with y'all. Just because why not, I'm gonna go in with the second color from the bouncy blushes and go in with my finger. Add even more color. Yeah, these are definitely more pigmented. And I'm noticing that everything is really easy to use with fingers. I feel like I could even have used the concealer with my fingers, so. So now it's time for eye products. The Beauty Bento, oh how cute. Beauty Bento Bouncy Shimmery Eyeshadow Trios. There are four of them. So it's a trio of bouncy, blendable, cream to powder shimmer shadows. So all of them are shimmery, which is very K-beauty. And I'm noticing a trend with this kind of like stackable theme for the brand. Oh yeah, that's Korean as hell. But that's some crazy shimmer that I only see in K-beauty brands. I don't know what it is with K-beauty brands, but they're able to get micro glitter, micro shimmer. They just do it so well. So anyway, this is number one rose water. So it comes with like a light pink champagne-ish color, a kind of rose, ooh, that's gorgeous. What is that? Rose pinky lavender silver color. And then like a berry burgundy. Yup. Yup. I don't think the camera understands how pretty that is. That is gorgeous. I don't even know if it can pick up on that. So that's the first trio. Number two, which is orange blossom, which sounds beautiful. Again, I'm loving the corresponding packaging. What is with these middle shades? Orange with green flex and gold flex. What? Poppy gray brown at the bottom. Ooh, what? So that's, that's our second trio. The camera is in no way picking up how beautiful those are. That's so frustrating. Next is toasted caramels, caramels, but it looks to be our neutrals. We got a white gold, really strong, almost green, yellow base. We got a bronze. You like a chocolate bronze? Like a chocolate dark dark brown chocolate? This one's nice though. And considering it's like a neutral, it's not boring. This one looks interesting. This is our fourth. Oh, that's a little disappointing. When I, <laughs> I don't know, I expected to see like something this strong. We got some rubies, ruby colors. So there you have it, that's all four trios. So I'm noticing that there's kind of a difference in texture of them. They're all very smooth or whatever, but some of them are definitely more of glitters, while others are definitely more shadows. Like these purples 
uh, these burgundies right here. Definitely more of shadows. Colors from the third quad are quite shadowy, not necessarily glitters. Okay, I'm gonna go into the second trio. This is the orange blossom trio. I'm gonna take the second color, which is this gorgeous orangey beautifulness. Go in with my fingers, cause that's what's actually recommended. Anyway. What finger? Oh, wrong finger. <laughs> gonna. Okie dokie. That is gorgeous. Oh my good. Oh my god, that's so pretty. Yo. Say that's how my song. Yo. Yo. Say song my song. Yo. Gonna go into the darkest shade a little bit on a brush because I'm curious how things work with a brush on the outer corner. So we're gonna do some tapping instead. We're tap, tap, tapping. I do wish I would have put some concealer on my lid though, simply because I would have evened out the color of my lids, but whatever, it's too late. Under the eye, I'm gonna take that first color in the thing in this part of the eye. Also using that lightest color and going in the middle of the lid on top of all the other color. Also just gently blending that on top of the line up top. And I'm going like under this tear duct area. I'm using this brown liner from Bia since we're doing the whole Korean thing. Now I'm just going in with a Misha pen liner to get right at the root to give a little bit more dimension. Okay, after a little mascara, this is what our eyes are looking like. In the same vein as the Mochi blushes, there are also Mochi highlighters. I got two out of four, I believe. I got number one and number three. Number one looks to be a white gold. And then this one is Luna, which looks to be a little peachy. Yeah. A little softer even. So those are those two. They have one more that's darker that's like a bronze and there's also a pink one and I don't like pink highlighters generally on me, so. Ooh. I just appreciate being able to put everything on basically just with my fingers. So that is Luna Highlighter. Stan Luna. Last but not least, we have lip product. There are three different lip products that came out all at once. Of course, each having their own variants of colors. I decided to get two of the formulations. They have, of course, a lip stain or a tint. Color changing lip moisturizer, as well as the Two's Company Nude Lipstick and liner duo. So I did not get the lip moisturizer. Tints and the duos. There are six colors in total of the tints. The full name is the Cushy Vibe High Pigment Lip Stain. These are $18. This is number one satin sheets. Just looking at it, these are a cream stain. Second only to oil lip tints. Cream tints are my favorite. Um, they're kind of that in between a lip tint and a liquid lipstick. They're usually matched, they're quite comfortable. This is number one satin sheets and it's described as a blue red I think that's very accurate it is a blue red velvet number two this is a rich wine this is number three silk robe referred to as a mauve rose this is number four cashmere this is a rich plum number five chiffon lush which is really cool actually which is a vivid purple Yo. Then we have the Two's Company Lipstick and Liner Duos. These go for $16 and there's six colors and I have five of them here. Packaging wise, this is so cute. It's like thinner on one side, pretty like seafoam green color. This is number one, Ghost Flower, described as a light tone rose. That's how much you get in. Okay, so that's that duo. That's almost like a purpley mauve. So much so that it actually kind of just blends into my skin. So I didn't get number two, which looks to be like a mauve. I have a million mauves, so I see why I didn't get it. Sand Dunes, number three. This is a milk chocolate. Basically the same color as my skin, so you can barely see that. We have number four, which is Desert Rose, which is which is described as a mid-tone rose. Those are those two together. Five Cactus Flower. Pretty similar to like all of these. These all look the same to me. Daybreak. Ooh, that's chocolatey. And that is what it's described as, a rich chocolate. Yes. Okay. Okay. 
wipe off the stains really quick to see how they are staining. So those um, work. <laughs> That's really pretty. Between the two products, I definitely recommend the stain over the lipstick thing. I just thought that was a little random. It's a little weird. Um, this is really, really comfortable. And my my lips look all pillowy. Let me just put on the purple one because that's the one I want to put on right now. Sorry, you rang. You rang for a look. Okie dokie, here we are. Here we have it. That is everything that I got from Kaza Beauty. So overall, what are my thoughts on the brand? I really like most things. <laughs> I really appreciate that the brand considered a whole host of possible consumers for the brand and therefore, you know, formed their brand accordingly. I don't see what doesn't make this K-beauty. All of these products are made in Korea. I guess the only thing that takes it away from being K-beauty is that they're not sold in Korea, I guess, or sold originally in Korea, but I consider this a Korean brand through and through, just one that has decided to make itself so that it's open arms for anyone to partake in. The only one that I think is kind of a waste of time, or at least seems to be, are the dual lipstick thing. And that's just because of personal taste. I don't use lip liner ever. I very rarely use cream lipsticks ever. I like the idea that most of these things, if not all of them, can be used with your fingers. They're very portable friendly, quite small, and adorable. They look really cute, but they don't feel cheap. They feel like they were worth the money that I spent. <laughs> and I'm just really excited to see what comes of the company. I wanna hear other people's thoughts. If you've tried anything from Kaza or planning to try anything from Kaza, let me know down in the comment section. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to share it, like it, subscribe to me cause you wanna join the family, we're great. That's all folks. I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to follow me on both of my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. And I'll see you guys next time.